Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you're here studying Bible prophecy with us. And today we're going to study Genesis 37 because we see another three rapture pattern. God has left us this pattern so that we can double check our own Bible prophecy interpretations, so that we can double check our Bible prophecy teachers' interpretations, and we can know if they have the correct interpretations to Bible prophecy. And But what is unusual about today's pattern is the Father is showing us how we're all going to end up worshiping His Son, because the Father wants His Son to receive glory through our rapture. And so what we're going to look at today, Genesis 37, and you see on the board, it's through three events that happened to Joseph. He received a coat of many colors, then he had a dream that involved his brothers, and then he had another dream that involved his brothers and his father and his mother. And so we're going to see how they are intricately entwined with each other, and they're all packed together real closely together there at the first part of Genesis 37. Now we see in verse 3 that Joseph received a coat of many colors from his father. Now that word many colors, the words many colors, it's pasim. It's the Hebrew word Strong's H6446 and it, it means many colors. Well, it's a, this multicolored tunic speaks of the ephod the, that the high priest wore. And because of the many colors that are depicted in the stones on that ephod, it's also symbolic of a garment, so a garment of many colors. Now listen to a couple of verses here. Isaiah 49, 18. Lift up your eyes and look around. All of them gather together. They come to you. As I live, declares the Lord, you will surely put on all of them as jewels and bind them on as a bride. What we're going to see here in a minute, we're going to make a connection with that multicolored garment with the bride. But let's look at Isaiah 61.10. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Well, we see here also in Revelation 4.3 that the raptured bride is the rainbow around the throne. What happens when light shines through jewels? Well, it creates that rainbow effect, doesn't it? Well, Heidi in our group noticed something interesting in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 18, whereas King David's daughter was wearing a garment of diverse colors. And it goes on to say that with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins. So here's King David uh, showing us a, being a type and shadow of the father and Tamar wearing this beautiful garment of many colors, and that represents the virgin daughters. Okay, now, as I mentioned, the rainbow of Revelation 4.3 represents the raptured bride and the many colors of the jewels that are like on the ephod, and that bride is going to be raptured up, and the father is, is one who picks the bride and gives the bride to his son. Well, Leanne in our group did a deeper study on the word many colors, and she discovered that that word comes from Strong's H6461, and it means disappear, vanish. So the phrase many colors means to vanish. Okay, so that's further evidence that this multicolored tunic that the father Jacob gave to his son Joseph is that tunic is a type and shadow of the bride. It was a gift from the father to the son, and it is his own possession. It is the son's possession as opposed to his inheritance, which he will receive later. Okay, now what is also very important about the coat of many colors as being the rainbow around the throne and making that connection that it is the raptured bride is because we also see the rainbow around the head of the very strong angel in 
Revelation 10, 1. And we understand that that very strong angel is the spirit of prophecy. And we know that because of how he is functioning. So in order to know what spirit one is representing, you need to be looking at their function. So the bride is connected with the spirit of prophecy, this very strong angel. And we also learn in Revelation 19.10 that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And this explains why you are interested in Bible prophecy. The bride is the is the group that is most interested. So interested that the bride group, they want to seek out the truth. They want to know the truth. And so the Holy Spirit is revealing new insights to us during these last days, right before we go up. Now, immediately after Joseph received that coat of many colors from his father Jacob, Joseph received two prophecies. They came in the form of dreams. And those two prophecies, each one represents a people group, or the first dream represents the church and how they will ultimately be bowing down, worshiping Jesus. Let's read that. Genesis 37, 7. Joseph relays the dream, but only to his brothers, and that's an important detail. So details are so crucial when studying Bible prophecy. Matthew 4.4, 4. we need to live on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God when you're studying Bible prophecy. So Joseph relays the dream, but only to his brothers, and only his brothers were in this dream. He says, we were binding sheaves in the field. My sheaf rose up and also stood erect. Your sheaves gathered around and bowed down to my sheaf. Okay, so this group represents the church once she's been raptured up to heaven. Now, this group is revealed in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. And this group is brought in through the ministry of the two witnesses that are grafted into the church in between the pre-trib rapture of the bride and the mid-trib rapture of the church, the two Jewish witnesses will be grafted into the church, and the 144,000 sealed Jews, they are men, and they will have ministries, every one of them, like the Apostle Paul. They will wake up the sleepy church, and together they will bring in the great harvest. That will be the greatest incoming of souls into the church than the entire 2,000 church age. So Revelation 7, 9 depicts the church in heaven worshiping Jesus. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation and all the tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, and palm branches were in their hands." Okay, so this is the global harvest that comes in, in that, during that first three and a half years of the tribulation. Okay, that, is, that group is the Revelation 12, 5 Harpazo the man-child that was caught up, the rod of iron. Those are two terms that the Father uses for the church after Revelation chapter 3. And if you do not know there are three raptures, you would never be looking in the book of Revelation for a different term that God is using for the church. And what is so interesting is, we know that throughout the scriptures, for the Messiah, God uses many terms. He's the branch, he's the good shepherd, he's our brother, he's our groom, he's our redeemer, he's the door, the bread. Well, the church is the body of Christ, so of course the Father has other terms for the church. Nobody is picking up on this because they think there's only one rapture. Well, and maybe later I'll talk about why the Father has allowed the church to go ahead and believe that until we get to the end here. But let's move on. Okay, now, Joseph then, in 
Genesis 37, 9, just a few verses later, he has another dream and he relays that. And he says, I have had still another dream. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. Well, this, this group is the remnant who are represented after they've been snatched during the parable of the wheat and tares, which Jesus said is at the end of the age. And this righteous remnant will be taken to the barn and they will remain in their mortal bodies in order to repopulate the earth during Christ's millennial reign. Now, they, this righteous remnant, and there will be Jews and Gentiles, and they, that remnant finds themselves in the second half of the tribulation. That's called the Great Tribulation. That's also the time called the time of Jacob's trouble. And this group, this remnant, they miss that mid-trib rapture, and they find themselves in that ghastly period, that second half of the tribulation. But they were worthy to escape, and God has shut, cut the days short for them, meaning he has cut the days short for their judgment in order to preserve their flesh so that they could fulfill God's purpose in the millennial reign of Christ. And we also want to understand that this it's through this remnant that the Father is fulfilling his covenant with Abraham and with Jacob. Abraham was the father of nations, and he was promised that there would be sons too many to count. They'd be like the stars of heaven, representing the those who are in Christ in faith, and they'd be like the sand on the seashore. So that's like the righteous who live on earth. It was Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and he was given promises too, that his, his sons would rule and reign over the nations. What we find interesting about this second dream of Joseph's is that it also involves the resurrected Old Testament saints that will be resurrected so that they can go into the millennial reign in their eternal bodies, but they will remain on earth. And we understand this detail about this second dream of Joseph's involving the resurrected saints because of the details given in the dream and what his father Jacob says. Jacob interpreted this dream of Joseph's for us. And this second dream is unlike Joseph's first dream because the second dream involves Joseph's father and mother. So this group will be resurrected after Christ's second coming and they are bowing down to Jesus and will be the righteous Old Testament saints like Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Rachel, Leah, Daniel, Isaiah, and all the other righteous Old Testament saints. Many of them are prophets that will be resurrected and they were killed because of Bible prophecy. Listen to how Jacob responded to Joseph after hearing about his second dream in verse 10. Here's Jacob's response. He related it to his father and to his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have had? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow ourselves down before you to the ground? Okay, so we get the detail. They're bowing down on the ground because this is the remnant. They are on the earth. And we get the detail. Jacob tells us the dream involved him and his mother. What's interesting about this dream is Rachel had already passed away at the time this dream was given to Joseph. But Jacob knows what this dream means. So now this is one of the ways that the new covenant is superior to the old covenant. Because you see, the bride and the church, we have been promised eternal life with Christ in glorified bodies and our dwelling is in heaven. Yet the old covenant saints, they were promised that they would inherit the earth. So you see, we inherit heaven, but the old covenant 
righteous saints, when they're resurrected, they were promised to inherit the earth. Okay, so this ends today's lesson on the three raptures and this additional pattern that we see that shows the cycle. And I hope you're enjoying it. I hope it clears up questions you may have had about Daniel's 70th week and how things are all going to shake out. And we're always going to be looking for this pattern to repeat throughout the scriptures because that is God filling us in with more details so we have more understanding, so we can connect more of the prophetic passages with each other and learn how they fall on God's timeline. Now, we don't have a date. That's not necessary. God is going to publish it into the spirit of the bride of when we're going up. So until then, we just keep gaining wisdom and we're learning Bible prophecy because we know, especially from this cycle, that the bride is intricately entwined with the spirit of prophecy because she's going to be working, ministering with the strong angel of prophecy during that seven year tribulation when she's up in heaven and in her glorified body. So see, we're even learning about what our ministries are going to be during that seven year tribulation. Many people say you cannot know. Well, you're going to think that if you still think there's only one rapture. But when you're looking for the pattern of three raptures and you discover the people groups involved, then you start picking up these new details and you begin to understand Bible prophecy at a very quick rate. You can even be teaching your children this. So all you homeschooling moms, keep up the good work. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.